Hi folks, welcome to this short video on participating preferred shares. So what are participating preferred shares? They're preferred shares that are issued with a participation feature that allows those who hold them to participate in dividend payments that are actually in excess of the rate that's stated. So you remember when you see preferred share dividends on a statement of financial position or balance sheet, they're normally in the equity section um, and they tell you that they are paying out a $5 per share dividend or a dollar per share dividend, whatever it is. So that's the stated rate. But the idea behind the participating preferred shares is that preferred shareholders who hold those shares that are participating can get in excess of what was stated, whether they stated $5, a dollar, whatever it is, they can get more than that. All right. So how does it work? Preferred shareholders receive their entitlement at the stated rate. So whatever the stated or the preference rate was when they bought the shares, that's the dividend they get. But before they can participate and get more of that, common shareholders have to get what we call a specified match. Okay, And they're only going to get that specified match if the company declares enough dividends to pay it out. Right, So it's only once the common shareholders get that specified match that but preferred shareholders who hold participating preferred shares can get any of the excess. Beyond that, of the regular participation or the regular preference that preferred shareholders would get, and the common shares getting, shareholders getting their match. All right. So in order to demonstrate this, let's have a look at this example. So this is just a short example, and we do a few different scenarios with it. So let's assume that in the equity section of the Statement of Financial Position or Balance Sheet, we have preferred shares, and those preferred shares each share gets a 50 cent per share dividend, so that's the stated preference rate. And there's 10,000 shares with shareholders. Common sharers, 40,000 shares outstanding. Now we're also given here how much equity the preferred shareholders paid in order to get their 10,000 shares, that's $100,000. And the common shareholders, to get their 40,000 shares, paid 200,000. So now what we need to do is the company decided to declare $35,000 in dividends under each of the scenarios I'm going to show you. So we're going to show you how to allocate that $35,000 amongst preferred shareholders and common shareholders to calculate their dividend entitlement. So now, how much of that 35000 is going to go to preferred shareholders and common shareholders if the preferred shares are non-cumulative and non-participating? So if they're non-cumulative, they're going to get the regular dividend, which is what? 50 cents a share times 10,000 shares is 5000 If the company declares 35000 the balance, or we can plug it, the rest is going to go to common. Let's now look at case B. Case B says, let's assume that the preferred shares are cumulative, but we haven't paid dividends in the past two years, and they're non-participating, meaning that there is no opportunity for um, preferred shareholders to get anything more than their 50 cents a share. So first of all, we have to pick up the arrearages. So we know regularly you would have given them 50 cents a share, times 10,000 shares, but you owe them that 5,000, 50 cents times 10,000, you owe them that for two years. So 50,000 times two is 10,000. In the current year, you give them 5,000. Okay, so 15,000 or 10 and 5, 15,000 of that 35,000 is allocated. So where does the other 20,000 go? Well, preferred shareholders get nothing more because they're non-participating, so it all goes to common. We plug it. All right. Now, what about in case C? Case C is a little bit different because now we've added in participation. So let's assume here that in case C, we have preferred shares that are cumulative, two years in arrears. So in that sense, just like case B, but now they're participating fully after the common shareholders get a 25 cent per share match. All right. So now don't worry about this calculation in brackets. Let's just focus on the 25 cents per share match only because in our questions we tell you what the match is. So if we look, first of all, we would pay off the arrearages. So of that 35,000, the first 10,000 is going to pay off arrearages of 5,000 a year for two years, right? In the current year, this year, 
the preferred share dividend preferred shareholders would get their preferred share dividend which is what they would normally get for each year five five thousand dollars that's fifty cents a share times ten thousand now how much do the common get? The common are first going to get their match at 25 cents a share times 40,000 shares. You remember in the question, we said that there's 40,000 shares outstanding. So therefore, we're going to allocate them $10,000. So this year, oops, this year, what's happened? The preferred shareholders got their $5,000 dividend and the common got their match. But you can see by the time we pick up our arrearages and the current year dividend going to the preferred and the common that get their match, we still have this additional 10000 or to shore up this $35,000 declaration. We now have to allocate an additional 10000 Now, because the preferred shareholders hold participating preferred shares, they're going to get a piece of that 10000 The question is how much? Most of the time, what we do, unless you're told otherwise, we will allocate the preferred shareholders their share of this 10000 based on their share of the regular dividend. The regular dividend they would normally get in any current year would be 5000 We don't include the arrearages in this calculation. So we go back and we say, OK, if they would normally get 5000 and before they could participate in more, Common would get 10000 then of that total $15,000 dividend that we would pay out for the current year, preferred shareholders get a third of it, 5000 a 15000 15000 for the whole year, they'd get 5000 and the Common would get 10000 So that's 10000 out of the entire 15,000 for the current year. So that's one third and two thirds. And we would use this allocation of one third and two thirds to allocate the 10,000 amongst the preferred and the common. So the preferred shareholders would get one third of this 10,000, which is 3333, 33, and the common would get the rest. We plug it to balance to allocate the 10,000. So if we want to see a little calculation here, I've done one down here. The 10,000 10, is remaining times one third. One third is the current year's regular entitlement. So of the regular dividend that we would pay out, okay, based on the current year, 5,000 or 50 cents a share times 10,000 preferred shares goes to preferred shareholders. 10,000 based on the match would go to common. So therefore, 5,000 represents one-third of the total 15,000, and 10,000 represents two-thirds of the entire 15,000. So because they fully participate, they get that 10,000 allocated to them at a full one-third, which is 3333, and the balance to common. Now, that's if they're fully participating. What if the question now says, as we have here, they're partially participating. So they partially participate just to a total of 70 cents a share. So in other words, they can't get in any one year more than 70 cents a share. Well, in any current year, they're already getting 50 cents a share. So they can only participate to a total of an additional 20 cents a share. That's all they can get. That's the maximum. So now, if we go back, we've still got them cumulative two years in arrears. So we allocate of the 35,000, 10,000 to the arrearages first. The current year, they get 5,000, which is the regular entitlement. And then the common shareholders get the match. So now, to allocate that 10,000, we wouldn't give them a full 33-33 like we did upstairs here in case C. Why? because they can only participate to a total of 70 cents a share. So the maximum they can get is 20 cents a share. Right? Why 20? Because they already got 50 cents a share. So if they already got 50 and the most they can get in any one year is 70, then they can only get an additional 20 cents a share. So 20 cents a share times 10,000 shares that they have Okay, and again, we know it's 10,000 shares because it tells us up here, right, 10,000 shares. They can only get an additional 2,000. Okay, so the rest of that 10,000, if 2,000 goes to preferred shareholders, 8,000 goes to common. 
All right, and down here we have that little calculation for you here, right? That shows you how we got that 2,000. They can only get a maximum of 70 cents a share, but if they only get already got 50 allocated to them in the current year, they can only get an additional two because they can only get 70 cents a share. 70 cents a share times 10,000 shares is 7,000. So there's your 7,000 here and here in this guy, right? Here and here. There it is. Now, in the last case, what if they're cumulative? We don't have any arrearages, but they partially participate up to an additional 70 cents a share. So now what can they get? They can get their regular 50 cents a share, but they can get up to an additional 70 cents a share. So these guys can get $1.20 a share. But do they? Because it says they partially participate. Let's go figure it out. Now they're cumulative, but there's no arrearages. So when we go to allocate the 35,000, we don't have an arrears row here. So they're going to get the regular entitlement of 5,000, and the common are going to get their match. So we've allocated 15,000 of the 35, so now we've got to allocate 20,000 more. How do we do that? Let's do a little calculation. They can get up to an additional 70 cents more, but that's their cap. Up to an additional, it doesn't say they get 70 cents a share more. It says that's the most additional share they can get. They can get up to that. So now we default <clears throat> and we say, well, if that's their max, what could they get under the normal condition? Because we're still only going to allocate <clears throat> at a maximum their um, uh, relative share based on the current year's allocation. So we default back to the one-third, two-thirds. So what's one-third of 20,000? One-third of it is 66.67, right? So that says they can get up to an additional 70 cents. So they can get up to an additional $7,000. That's the max, but we don't have to give them the full additional 7,000. So we would default back to the contract that says they get a third of what's left based on the regular dividend entitlement in the current year. And so one third of that is 66.67. And then the common would get two thirds of this, which is going to be 13,333, and that would be to balance. All right. So you'll notice they partially participate right? Because they can't get the whole 70 cents. They can only get up to that additional amount. So they can't get the full amount, right, of that 70 cents a share to give them 7,000. So they partially participate because they can't get the full 70. They're capped by this arrangement here. So this concludes our discussion or our introductory discussion on participating preferred shares. I hope you found the video helpful.